afternoon, and welcome to DNH TV Live. I'm Keith Quinlan, Senior Vendor Business Manager at DNH. Today, I'm joined by Chris Phillips, Technical Engineer Supervisor, and Rhonda Hebbard, VAR Channel Programs Manager, to discuss building tech solutions for esports and K-12. And with that, Chris, take it away. Thanks, Keith. Uh, first off, before we start, I want to uh, quickly play a video that we were able to produce uh, shortly before uh, we all kind of moved to this new uh, work from home environment. Uh, we were able to put together a complete esports solution uh, to, to demo for you guys. And I think it'd be a great resource to start off uh, our conversation uh, in terms of uh, K-12 uh, esports equipment. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire up that video. To begin, most people are going to actually look at the computer that the athletes are going to be using as part of the eSports uh, program. And there are two routes to go when you are looking at these systems. The first route is the OEM uh, route. Right over here, we have an example of an OEM system. That is a Lenovo Legion. Uh, these systems are great because they have all the components pre-built inside of them uh, right from the beginning. Uh, the motherboard, uh, processor, memory, hard drive, video card. They're all pre-installed, all ready to go. Operating systems are already installed as well. So it gives uh, the athletes uh, no wait time to be able to spin up their system and start uh, competing on it. Another example over here is, a, is an MSI model. This is, uh, has a little bit smaller of a form factor than the Lenovo over there. But again, everything's pre-installed, ready to go. Uh, they look great coming out of the box. They usually all have great LED lighting and things of that nature. Uh, so these are a great route if you, if you just want to kind of get something out of the box and be ready to go. But uh, there's another way you can go, and that is the custom way. Uh, right here we have a custom system uh, that we put together as part of this eSports experience. Uh, what makes custom systems a little bit more uh, better for the eSports environment, or might be an option that you might want to consider, is that the athletes themselves can actually put these systems together as part of the curriculum. Uh, they can put these, uh, the motherboard, processor, memory, uh, video card, all those components together. And when they do that themselves, uh, studies have found they actually have a better connection with those systems. They take better care of, care of them, uh, they tend to treat them better, and then they have the ability that down the line they can uh, service these systems themselves. So if you need to add more memory, uh, update the graphics card, add more storage, or if a part of it fails and they need to swap it out, uh, they're able to go in there and service the system themselves rather than calling uh, IT to do that for them. Again, it gives them that better connection with the system and it adds just another level of uh, immersion into the esports uh, curriculum that your resellers are looking for. Uh, so on this system, there's an Intel-based system uh, it's a thermal take case, a great thermal take case with a tempered glass uh, front here. We have an NVIDIA graphics card. We have uh, NVMe storage from uh, WD in there. We have a, a thermal take uh, power supply in there. All these are lit up. Uh, it looks like a great piece of art. And again, gives you that kind of custom feel that you get a little bit more than just having the OEM models. After the system themselves, the next thing you're probably gonna to wanna to look for is the monitors. Uh, we have two monitors behind me, uh, one from uh, Lenovo and one from MSI. Both these monitors, uh, the important thing to consider with the monitors is their refresh rate. Both of them operate at 144 hertz refresh rate. Uh, you're really looking for a monitor that has a more than 120 hertz refresh rate. That's because uh, the higher the refresh rate, the more smoother of a gaming experience that the players actually get and that's uh, just great for the overall gameplay experience for the actual athletes, because the athletes are gonna want the, the best experience they can get, uh, more frames, better ability to play. After that, uh, the next thing to think about is the actual headsets they're gonna be using. Uh, we have two uh, headsets, one again from uh, Lenovo Legion, and uh, they believe we have a Corsair headset back there. Um, again, uh, the headset is just another aspect of it. Uh, you need great audio to be able to compete in a lot of these games. So a headset that can not only uh, allow the athletes to hear the game, but also block out all the things that are happening around them will just make the experience all the better. After that, um, 
get into keyboards and mice, uh, there's a wide variety of vendors uh, that sell uh, esports focused, gaming focused keyboard and mice. Uh, usually looking at a mechanical keyboard. Um, most people like to have keyboards with LEDs in on them because they look better. And you know, things that look better are often feel like uh, they make the experience all the better. Again, same LED mice, uh, things of that nature. You can go wired, wireless. Most wireless mouses also now have a response time that is more than sufficient for uh, the eSports uh, experience. Now that's done, that's mo it for most of the actual system hardware. After this, you actually need to start thinking about the, the furniture that these uh, athletes are gonna be sitting at uh, and, and performing uh, on. Uh, this desk here is actually a desk designed from gaming, uh, from Thermaltake. Uh, what makes this different from a normal desk? Uh, two things, it's got this tray here, which all the power cables and all the, the uh, cables that are involved with these systems actually sit in these trays. Um, that allows the, the uh, cables to not hang down at the athlete's feet and actually get kicked out during the middle of gameplay. Uh, so it kind of makes a more uh, uh, contained experience there. Uh, then after that, uh, these desks also have the ability to uh, have the height adjusted. So if you have a taller player, they need a desk to set up a little bit higher. It's just a knob down here. You can screw that knob and the desk will go up. Same with the chairs behind us, very fully adjustable, made for gaming, made for the ability to uh, kind of position, have the, allow the players to position themselves how they need to, to uh, better see the screens. Uh, after that, you need the ability for the people that are actually watching the event to see what's going on. And that's when we kind of get into the digital signage side or the Pro AV side of this. Uh, behind me is an example of a Pro AV setup for eSports, and that is a three by one video wall. Uh, in this video wall, uh, we have two screens that are dedicated to each one of the players. Uh, each are actually mirroring what the players are seeing on their screen, so you can see as a viewer exactly what each player is seeing. And then the third display is actually uh, running off of a Intel Skull Canyon NUC, and it's acting as a pseudo camera person that's uh, showing the overall gameplay uh, so that the people that are watching have the view of the players and an overall view of what's happening in the game. Now for different games, this uh, display would be doing different things. Some games it would just be digital signage or information on the players, uh, but that can be customized from uh, experience to experience. You can also set up two by two video walls or use one giant screen that can be divided into four different parts and you can have multiple different players on the sing a single screen. It's really up to you. So that video was part of DNH's uh, Threadcast. Uh, that Threadcast is available on demand through the end of, of, the, of the month. If you'd like to get more information on the Threadcast and view a lot of the content that we put together for it, it is available at dnh.com uh, slash Threadcast. Uh, but with that, uh, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, push out a poll question to you guys. Uh, as always, when we, we do these poll, these poll questions, uh, your feedback on these things uh, help us kind of tailor the content and the uh, Solutions, uh, solutions we uh, provide for you guys. So please take a moment and uh, go ahead and answer the poll question. And as uh, you guys are doing that, I wanna dive in a little bit deeper about some of the things we talked about uh, in that video. Uh, first of all, gonna start with um, the actual uh, gaming hardware. We talked about OEM options at the very start. Um, we explored kind of the, the desktop options there because we had two solutions that sat on the desk. Um, uh, Asus has a great desktop uh, OEM option uh, with the Republic of Gaming uh, models. Um, again, it's a great option if your school just wants to be able to take a device, plug it in, and start to working, start that having the device working immediately. Uh, uh, Acer's, Acer's Predator line uh, is a fantastic line if they're looking for a more mobile uh, esports experience. In the times that we're living in, there might be a situation where schools might need to be able to have these students be able to take some device home with them that can uh, be used for these esports competitions. Uh, if that's the case, Acer and the Predator line might be uh, a, uh, a solution uh, they, they can think about. Um, before we go any further, I want to really quick also then push, uh, kind of give the uh, results of the, the poll that we just pushed out. Uh, and Keith, uh, as you can see right now, um, 
in terms of percentages of uh, schools that are interested in esports, uh, zero to twenty five percent is actually for the current climate kind of expected. Because right now, uh, I don't know if you'd agree with me, Keith. A, a lot of the schools are probably just kind of focused on the, the learning aspects, right? Yeah, definitely. We're definitely seeing a lot of that right now. Uh, people, you know, getting their feet wet, uh, fielding questions from the schools, etc. <laughs> But what I can't say, um, and I can't say this uh, with a ton of authority, because obviously there's there's so much, so many questions out there. But as we kind of roll into the next school year, um, esports might be one of those extracurricular activities, uh, apart from uh, you know, aside from sports, which you do need to to hold together, you need to be together in, in large groups. Esports is maybe not so much. So we might not see that interest right now, but coming into the the school off season and coming into the next school year, that interest in uh, esports, we anticipate will kick back up again. So maybe not the focus at this moment, but down the line might be something we uh, see a little bit more interest in. So moving on uh, away from the OEM product, I do want to uh, talk about uh, kind of custom build systems. We did, we did talk about this briefly in the video as well. Uh, like I said, it's a great option if you want to include these systems in part of a larger technical curriculum for your students, where you have uh, uh, students that are uh, want to uh, go into the workforce as more technical support or technical resources. Uh, they're going to be able to build the systems, and then you'll have athletes that use the systems. So uh, being able to collect those components uh, from our vendors is probably one of the key things uh, you can take away from this presentation. Uh, Cooler Master has a lot of great taste and uh, uh, power supply options. Again, the Republic of Gaming Alliance from uh, ASUS um, has a lot of fantastic motherboards with the RGB options to kind of make it really make them showcase pieces. Um, again, Cooler Master, you can see in this, this uh, system that I have right with me, uh, RGB uh, uh, cooling solutions for the systems. Uh, Micron, if you're looking for, for memory solutions, Micron's got some great uh, solutions that are tailor-made uh, for gaming systems, uh, and I would highly recommend looking at those. And of course, uh, 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 Seagate and their Barracuda, or excuse me, their, their um, uh, Firecube line of uh, NVMe drives uh, are, are fantastic for the esports systems because you need that speed uh, in terms of just loading those assets off the hard drive into the games. NVMe drives are very important for that. And that's why I would go pretty much with the, uh, the Firecube, the NVMe drives from uh, Seagate on that part. Uh, moving on, uh, we did talk about monitors. And again, I'd like to stress uh, uh, monitors are important, uh, especially in the gaming world when you need to get those, uh, the, the, the many frames as possible to the athletes. So you're always looking for monitors that have at least 120 20 uh, hertz refresh rate. Some, most of them now are sitting at 144. Some go up as high as 240, uh, but you really want to be above the 120 mark. Again, ASUS, Republic of Gaming, uh, Philips, AOC, uh, ViewSonic as well do have some great options uh, for the monitor front. Uh, kind of moving on then to, to, to headsets. We talked a little bit about those as well. Uh, there are two really options you can go with. Uh, we showed some wired solutions in the video. Uh, there's also wireless solutions like uh, this one right in front of me from uh, Logitech. This one's great because it is, it's fully wireless and the dock itself is actually a charging solution for it. So when you set it in at the end of the, the day, it will charge it. Next time you pick up the headset, it's good to go. So uh, as a gamer, the last thing you want is your wireless headset to die at you uh, mid-game. Uh, solutions like this kind of make sure that doesn't happen. Um, again, Always great for not just being able to hear the, the audio for the game, but also block out any ambient audio that might be happening from people that are watching the, the competition or just uh, systems in general. Moving on, uh, keyboard and mice uh, are very important because uh, it's, it's really the way the athletes are actually interacting with the game. Uh, Again, uh, on the mice front, there are wireless mice uh, options that do have a low enough uh, uh, latency rate that they become kind of in, they can't become indecipherable from a wired mouse solution. Uh, Logitech has a great one over here, uh, the, I believe the 903 line. Uh, the great thing about this one, the wireless mouse is actually charged by the mouse pad. Uh, so again, much like the headset, 
you don't want your mouse to die as you mid game for a solution like that the wireless mouse is never going to die because it's constantly sitting on the power pad uh, again man mechanical keyboards are usually the way to go in terms of gaming uh, there are ma many mechanical keyboard options out there cooler master uh, republic of gaming and of course uh, logitech as well uh, getting near uh, kind of starting to wrap it up uh, furniture is the next big uh, thing i want to talk about uh, whether it be desk like uh, the one i showed in the video from thermal take or chairs like this uh this thermal take one which uh, keith by the way I'm, I'm taking this one with me home so uh, <laughs> hey go for no, it I, uh, i'm not allowed so, 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 I, I, I actually i heard i heard go for it so go for someone's it someone's gonna need help <laughs> but these are <laughs> these are great they they keep the athletes comfortable while they're playing you do sit for quite some time uh, when you're playing, uh, especially when they're going through long practice sessions. They can be sitting for anywhere from an hour to two at a time before they're able to stand up and move. Uh, these ones are, are great for, for ergonomics to make sure that they're not over -strain, straining themselves uh, while sitting. Uh, so it's much better than just having a standard chair. Um, and it's quite frankly what they're looking for. We're in the process of onboarding a new vendor right now that's going to have uh, some more options for chairs and desks also. Yep. Uh, next is the digital uh, displays that we did talk about. Uh, right now in this climate, you might not be thinking about the digital signage, but uh, uh, in a lot of cases, when we kind of do get back to uh, some semblance of normalcy, a digital signage is going to be great to get uh, information out to people uh, in a timely fashion. And uh, as we all know right now, getting the most accurate information uh, as soon as possible is probably one of the most important things to keeping us all safe. Uh, and in the esports world, it can be used to not only get provide information, but to display the actual competition itself, as we showed in that video. So keeping that in mind, uh, ViewSonic's got a, a lot of great options. Uh, for digital signage, whether you're trying to do a video wall or you're just looking for individual displays to put behind the uh, athletes. Uh, 